two, three. Welcome to another episode of Coffee Chat, and I'm Sangwa. I'm Anson, and we're from Eastern Music. Music. All right, so Eastern Music is a company that started in 1978, <laughs> dealing in all kinds of um, Chinese music instruments. So we sell music instruments, and we do lessons and also repairs. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it is called Coffee Chat. So what coffee do we have today on our table? Um. I'm not sure how you pronounce this. Gurgar Chef. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's an Americano. Uh, yeah, so Lao Pan likes his Americano. And for me, I have, I'm an iced coffee kind of guy. So it's a kopi si kosong uh, thing. Yeah, I always drink um, my coffee hot. Yeah, I, I like to drink ice with no sugar. So speaking of no sugar, it's, things might get a little bitter today because... Oh, really? We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're going to touch on a very interesting and not widely discussed topic mm. uh, I would I think it would be nice if we just chat a little bit about um, the different types of conductors that we uh, meet or come across in Chinese orchestra okay I, mean, I think we're not going to limit it just in Singapore but maybe like the general region here that we the oh. foreseeable region you know because uh, because you are from Malaysia so yeah, that's you right and also well. uh, might have some uh, su- uh, experience stories to share. Not my own. Maybe I have friends from Malaysia. Mm. Who knows? <laughs> okay, okay. So, Anson, mm. um, maybe you just um, tell us your experience of uh, being in an orchestra. Not really your experience, but like um, the Lai how, Long Chi Mai. How many orchestras <laughs> have you uh, been in? How how many conductors have you experienced before? Ah, okay. So uh, I start out my uh, CO journey. Way back in Malaysia, Sabah, Sanakan, my hometown. Uh, so that was my first ever uh, experience playing a, an orchestra. Then uh, eventually I came to Singapore and I joined the Singapore Polytechnic Chinese Orchestra. Uh, that really opened up the door for me uh, in terms of like playing in orchestras in Singapore. Because uh, back in Malaysia, I only have one orchestra and there weren't other orchestra that I can play, I can join. So in my whole world, I only know my own orchestra. So coming to Singapore, there's this culture where they'll ask you to guest play. So I didn't even know there's this term guest playing for okay, G-U-S, G-U-E-S-T, guest. Yes. Not, not guest, like guessy. Guest playing uh, until I came to Singapore. So I joined Singapore Polytechnic and then my first experience of playing outside of my school orchestra was uh, in a CC orchestra, Hong Kong North. I don't think it's there anymore because it was under the same conductor. Then after that, I got asked to play for another Polytechnic orchestra and sooner or later, I'm just popping here and there, helping out orchestra. But I would say my mainstay was Singapore Polytechnic. Uh, after I graduated, I joined Ching San CC. Chinese Orchestra and I'm there ever since and uh, since playing in different orchestras there's got bound to be different conductors different uh, conducting style rehearsal style and leadership style so I think that would be a good uh, way to look at our discussion and conversation today also mm, okay as for me um, yeah what about you Laban? I don't <laughs> have a lot of I don't guess play a lot. Mm. I mean, it'll be just my secondary school Chinese orchestra, and when I was in JC, I just sort of guess play. I didn't really. You were you didn't join the practices. You only appeared during concerts. Uh, yes, something like that. Wow, <laughs> someone's a high flyer. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, I went to um, the music and drama company. Yeah, NDC. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that. Uh, that's that's about it, you know. Sometimes I do appear. Not sometimes, actually, just once. If I do remember, um, I guess play at uh, Kaban Baru CC. Ah, I remember you played for a primary sc- your primary school, like alumni reunion. I would I wouldn't say that is uh, joining an orchestra because uh, guest play. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean I just appear on that day and <laughs> I didn't even like join I say, high flyer. <laughs> So my experience uh, with orchestras is quite limited. Uh. Okay. So today I will be uh, all ears listening to what <laughs> Anson and okay, his yes. friends. <laughs> yes. So uh, prior to, to recording our podcast today, I've actually collected 
some submissions uh, from people. I wouldn't say just friends, just people who has a little bit to share about their orchestra uh, experience. Great. When you say orchestra, do you mean uh, the experience with conductors or in orchestra? Uh, we're just narrowing down to their experience with um, conductors. Okay. Yes, because uh, being players, uh, musicians in an orchestra is a different topic that we can also discuss mm, about. But mainly right. today, we're just going to share about conductors and uh, perhaps leadership style like we uh, mentioned previously. But uh, before I, we jump into that, maybe I can share a bit about my own experience. Like, uh, Because a, a general idea of a good orchestra that I go to is that uh, rehearsals are always very efficient. When we say uh, the rehearsal time is from this time to this time, it will stick within this time. And even before the, uh, the rehearsal starts, the conductor will lay out what are the pieces that we'll be rehearsing. So uh, we all come prepared. So I mean, but of course, uh, having said that, uh, a good orchestra also depends on the musicians themselves uh, putting in the effort, making sure that uh, rehearsals can run smoothly. So it's a two-way thing. The conductor has to be able to conduct rehearsals efficiently, but at the same time, the musicians themselves will have to make sure they come prepared or else uh, it will be a very difficult, like log loggerhead kind of situation. Okay, mm, right. so uh, my experience in general, because uh, I did play in a few orchestras, like we mentioned just now, most of the orchestra that I'm in, I'm quite happy with how things are run because, yeah, like I said, everything is just very efficient. And we, one thing I like is that we usually don't add practices. Like uh, even uh, coming up to the concert date, uh, we just make sure that the orchestra musicians are well rested, and they don't get overworked. Yeah, so I think that's a good benchmark uh, when it comes to joining orchestra. I mean, for me uh, at least. Yeah. Okay, efficiency and punctuality. <laughs> How to pronounce punctuality. It? Punctuality, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, but in some of uh, our defense, I mean, I, I myself is also guilty of it. Sometimes I'll get be late for re rehearsals as well. And uh, rehearsals tend to, I mean, I'm not the only person late at that causing the, that causes the rehearsal to start late, but like sometimes the conductor will wait for more people to come or else he has nothing to conduct also if he, there's only like, five, six people there ready to go. Yeah, so I think with that in mind, yeah. Okay, so you talk about um, what makes a good orchestra, mm -hmm. but um, the you, conductor. you have not talked about uh, okay. what makes a good contact conductor. I think the character of the conductor is quite important also because sometimes when we join orchestra, it's not just because of um, we have a lot of friends. I mean, that's a big reason why we join orchestra also because uh, human will thrive in social interactions and also being in a community. So having a good leader or at least a conductor that is very, uh, can work well with, like they listen to your opinion, they even outside of orchestra, you guys can hang out, can just chat casually. That the barrier, not I wouldn't say barrier, but like the gap is not too big, you know, like, uh, is someone approachable and or someone that doesn't just randomly throw fits of tantrums at you and like making you feel small and disrespected as a member there. I think that also makes it quite enjoyable to be uh, led under such a um, conductor Yeah, that makes you feel uh, noticed, makes you feel heard and makes you feel respected and like you are really part of this big orchestra, this community. You just now you said makes you feel hurt together with Oh, H-E-A-R-E, -E, heard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have to work on, my, work on my hurt <laughs> okay, and <okay>. hurt. <laughs> just clarifying yes, for... Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, these are the, the okay. qualities that I look for okay, when, if okay. I'm in an orchestra. All right, all right. Mm. So yeah, please go ahead and see <laughs> what your contacts have uh, to say about the conductors they have experienced before. Okay, so uh, what I'm about to read to you is just submissions from a few people mm -hmm. and I'm reading it word for word. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, so this person says, firstly, I believe the 
best kind of conductor is one that does their homework and is efficient during rehearsals. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. <laughs> knowing what the piece should sound like or what they want the piece to sound like and knowing how to execute it effectively really makes a world of difference. And like they know what can be fixed during and uh, during in uh, during sectionals and what can be run through a few times in rehearsals so they won't make you waste your time during combined rehearsals listening to other instruments having 20 minutes sectional practice which is like 10 percent of your rehearsal gone so granted a big part of this is the orchestra being hardworking enough like what we said just now, to do their homework and get it down by next practice. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Yeah. So basically what this person is saying that uh, the conductor need to do their homework also. So we mentioned that um, as musicians, we have to practice our parts before going to orchestra. So I think a, what this person is saying that uh, half of the effort is, comes, also comes from the uh, conductor themselves. Because they gotta know uh, where are the cues, they gotta know um, how they want the music to sound like. Because I think you can, you, you and I can agree, uh, music is, is quite subjective. Sometimes it depends on what we're feeling or so, right? So conductors gotta jot down on their conducting uh, con uh, their scores uh, to make sure that they can always make. Uh, conduct the same way because uh, musicians sometimes they join in late or sometimes some musicians just join in from day one up to concert date and the conflicting uh, information might be quite uh, troublesome if you are a musician yourself. Okay, mm. so yes, I do agree that um, the conductor has to do their own homework. Mm. Um, sometimes it is... Um, so... Of course, the best scenario would be the conductor knows the work inside out. Mm. Yeah, but a lot of times, you know, um, they get scores which they don't even have zhong pu, you know, like here and there. The master score, master yeah, copy. Yeah, the master, the master score. Mm. And I do have a bit of experience conducting um, um, because I actually had to relieve uh, secondary school um, for like just two, three <laughs> lessons. So yeah. for teenagers, uh, secondary school. Yeah, so I find that it's actually quite a, a nerve, a nerve wracking experience. Even uh. though they're teenagers, you know, I find that I need to know the piece very well. Yeah. In order to be able to um, to to give constructive give constructive um, comments. For example, pieces like Jing Sen Kuang, you might not have a master score, so uh. you just have to, uh, based on what you know, to mm. uh, correct along the way. Yeah. So actually, um, I just now you read that one of the things is uh, the conductor spending like twenty minutes on yeah, a certain section. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, if it is the um, player who is not um, the players in that section that is not doing well, of course, I think it makes sense. Not makes sense. Uh, it is understandable that he spends twenty minutes on it. Uh. but if he is spending twenty minutes on it because he is like, for example, uh, an erhu player like me, uh. I, like me. Then I would know that well, oh, who, how it needs to be played. So I spend more time on this while neglecting the other sections. Yeah, then maybe that is not uh, a good idea. Yeah. So actually, uh, to that point, the person continued. Uh, so there's also a kind of a different kind of conductor that is so inefic uh, so inefficient <laughs> that they cannot get down <laughs> one thing even with consecutive days of rehearsals. Why? It's either because they cannot remember how they directed or conducted a particular part of the piece. So every time you reach that part, it's a surprise. Or it's because they find another random part of the piece and they pick that heel and die on it. Okay, that's a little harsh. <laughs> and then congratulations, another 20 to 30 minutes of your life gone. Um, this person, I can sense a lot of <laughs> <laughs> frustration. Uh, and in, anger, yes. Yeah, in this person's uh, rehearsal. So what, what, what is this person saying in, in this part? It's just okay. saying, the person is just saying that, I think it's just to continue on uh, how when conductors, uh, they don't write down, the, write down their notes and once they reach that part again, then they find something new or they find random parts of that passage that they want to rehearse and it just makes it very inefficient. So I think the point that we're driving in so far right, is what makes it 
uh, not pleasurable, not happy, not fun to play in, or- in an orchestra. In terms of conducting style is when things get, um, like things keep repeating and things cannot be fixed and it's just very inefficient and it's, I wouldn't say boring, but like other sections might not get a chance to play their parts and it will just get very dry hearing the same parts over and over and over again. Yeah. Okay, so in essence, I think um, maybe a good conductor would make notes and make sure that he or she remembers what he talked about at certain parts so that when the part ca- comes the next time, the next practice, he will, not, he will do the same thing and not um, come up with surprises. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, okay lah. I mean, individually. I mean, my personal experience is, um, for example, this bar that needs to be changed in the dynamics. Like the score says, uh, need to be piano, but the conductor thinks that need to do a forte piano before coming in. And then, uh, I remember being in that orchestra. Uh, members usually come slightly later when near a concert and every week the conductor will have to remind the musicians that oh there's a change in this one so the conductor consciously made a note there to remind the musicians to always make sure to make that make those changes or else it's going to be very ineffective to stop and retry stop and retry until everyone got so before entering that part the conductor will already say like okay uh, it was two weeks ago we already made these changes so please write it down so we can move on quickly and move to other more difficult parts yeah okay okay. Mm. Mm. so Here's another submission. Mm. Uh, the person wrote, uh, a major red flag uh, for conductors is that they act way too friendly with you. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, in what, in what context? Let's see. So unless this is a teacher that you've followed for years or has seen you grow, uh, presumably from a kid, and you have a real connection with, there is no need for a conductor you hardly know to be all up in your personal business. <laughs> <laughs> and even mention it in front of the whole orchestra or maybe they expose like certain relationships or something I don't know you ha- don't have to spill your deepest darkest secrets to them even if they ask and it is normal to feel uncomfortable and politely end a conversation if they are asking too much about your personal life <laughs> and if they act so friendly that they physically touch you it is okay to back away. Oh my god, this is getting a little... <laughs> getting a little... Mm. It is okay to move away from a touch or a grab of your arm or shoulder if it's unwanted and you do not have to let it happen because it's a teacher or a conductor. So I think right now we're touching on like very personal um, matters. Yeah, I mean, this is not only um, true in orchestra. Yeah, I think in know. work environment, yeah. school, I think... This is a very good example of knowing your boundaries. Yeah, yeah everywhere. Like, I mean, just um, I just want to say that although um, I mean, the conductor is like a figure of authority. Mm. So sometimes you might be peer pressured, you know, not peer pressured. You might be pressured into uh, accepting things that is it's the norm. You no, know, accepting things that is uh, not the norm. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what I meant was like accepting it as if it was the norm. Yeah, accept- yeah. Okay, yes. Both ways works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just a reminder that, I mean, they're, they're just humans like us, you know, conductors. Mm. Just like teachers also, not only conductors or instructors, they're all humans like us. So if, um, yeah, you do not need to feel um, pressured to accept things if you think that... Um, the person um, is asking too much or mm. the person is getting too close to you, you know, just, yeah, just back away. Yeah, correct. Okay, but uh, on that topic, mm. um, have you heard of anything? Uh, no. No, have you? Have mm. you heard of any instances? Uh, I've, okay, maybe now that I'm reading it, perhaps uh, the, the conductor is just someone who likes to like tap on your shoulder when they talk. Or just like grab grab your arm and when they have something exciting to tell you, perhaps. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I I mean I did uh, hear someone talk about some instructor who yes, you when you talk when they talk to you then they would like to pet you, like yeah, hey. pet you on um, shoulder. 
or touch you on the hand, maybe. Okay, maybe I'm not sure. I, ne- I never really registered this kind of thing. Plus, I mean, I would think that those are uh, what what old people would do, lah. Like, oh, know? yeah, 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 yeah. Perhaps, uh, yeah, boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> girl, uh. <laughs> maybe if the yeah. Hmm. Mm, okay. But yes. yes, I think uh, it's important to know your boundaries. Yeah, and, I mean, pro- in this day and age, also. Yeah, protect yourself, like, You yeah, know, they, right. uh, there can be all kinds of people out there. So just uh, protect yourself. Yes. So uh, another person uh, says that uh, we've come. Uh, we also encountered conductors that gravitates towards only playing traditional pieces, and has a distinct rejection of um, newer works, modern works. What's your take on it? Well, uh, what's nothing wrong with playing traditional pieces. True, you know? true. Tra- traditional pieces is what we grew up with, and I mean, I think it, it's really what you can proper, uh, properly learn, uh, in the instrument, even in the context of an instrument, because tra- traditional pieces sometimes uses, uh, techniques, or like we say, the yun wei, the wei dao, the tone, the taste of the instrument. It has to come from the traditional pieces also. Yeah, a lot of the traditional pieces, you will be able to, be able to hear all the slides and the different embellishments yeah. of uh, like folk music, traditional because Chinese Because I remember uh, speaking with our local instructor. Uh, we were backstage during a uh, concert break, break time. And then she was saying how she would appreciate if orchestras play more traditional pieces, especially for the younger kids, the primary, secondary school kids, because if we cut, uh, because modern pieces nowadays is just counting, just counting tempo and rhythm. So um, if the kids graduate, they leave school and they join outside orchestra, sometimes they lack the musical knowledge and all they, they can do is just count ta, 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 that's all they can do. So that was a, the takeaway from the conversation I had with the said instructor. Mm, mm. Mm. I think it's, it's I think each, I think everyone who learn Chinese um, music instruments should um, at some point of their life, you know, play traditional pieces like the like, classics. <laughs> yeah, like Yao Zhu Qu. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Yao Zhu Qu. Uh, Jiang Jun Ling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, all these pieces actually compared to the modern pieces, they are relatively easy. I yeah. wouldn't say so. Eh. Really? Actually, some traditional pieces are way more difficult. Because it musically it's very difficult to pull off. Musically, yeah, but technically yeah. it's uh, much easier compared to uh, debatable the, the new 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 yeah. newer songs. No, mm, debatable. Like, <laughs> like I mean, when you play, for example, what what what's a very um, recent or um, okay ta- recently the more like da zhong hua like people like to play is uh, either Taiyang Song. Mm. Okay, even saying Taiyang Song is a bit 2020s. Uh, if we are in the 2020s, sorry. <laughs> Early 2020s, we're reaching the mid So it was Taiyang Song, Yin Xiang Guo Yue, and lately, Gan Jiang Mu Ye is... So are, are these, do these songs have much more uh, like semi it's more, technic- it's more technical, especially Taiyang Song, uh, first movement and fourth movement. There's a lot of semi quavers running, uh, running notes yeah, here. Yeah, there, there. there you go. You know. Yeah. So, so it's just. Yeah. Da-ka-da-ka-da. yeah. So so, the traditional songs they do like not... uh, like we mentioned Yao Zhu, Qu, yeah. uh, Jiang Junling, uh, Qing Bing Ma Yong, all this. They are very thick in terms of musicality. Like yeah. you really have. It's so. It's a benchmark to showcase how well your how good your orchestra is. This to showcase like traditional pieces. Fei Tian, yeah. Is another like one. my yeah. my daughter is actually in an in a school orchestra, and recently she's playing Yao Zhu Uji, and mm-hmm. I'm like pleasantly surprised. Wow, you're playing this song. This so is nice. we're revisiting the classics. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think it's good that they get to play all these songs because before that they were playing um, what. Uh, 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 Tang, Tang Xiang. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think like we're that. slowly slipping out <laughs> the, the, the orchestra already. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I mean, I, it's not that I am saying bad things about the orchestra. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, everything is, is about a balance. Lah. You cannot keep playing the old, old tunes as well. You need to have a balance. You need to have some new songs to test people. To push the, to push the line, to push the boundary yeah. even further. Yeah, especially if your orchestra is is not um like a secondary school orchestra or or it's it's 
it's an orchestra with people who Different. already have skills mm -hmm. you want to come in and you want to play something different and challenge yourself for example maybe um tertiary or maybe even jc to a lesser extent or maybe outside community orchestras yeah oh. you, you need to you need to have a good mix a good mix la. i mean you, you need to have stuff like tang xiang <laughs> so <laughs> maybe not that difficult but uh, so that people are so that you can attract people who are, are who are already skilled to come in? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's true. So, uh, uh, we have two more submissions. So one of them say that there are conductors that talk nonstop <laughs> during, <laughs> during rehearsals and end up instead of rehearsing pieces, they share their life stories. So perhaps if it's helpful to the music, sure. But if it's near competition or concert, that would be rather inefficient. Yeah, that that I can agree. You oh, know, you, I, you heard stories? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> there's a pause here, mm. listeners. There's a pause here. So <laughs> contemplating whether to share, spill the beans. Well, I'm sure there uh. are a lot of <laughs> instructors who, who do that. But I mean, a lot of instructors, they are actually quite uh, long-winded and naggy. And, you know, during the practice time mm -hmm. okay okay Anson would you <laughs> like the instructor to share things during the rehearsal or you just would like him to get on with it you know oh my uh, suddenly bounce back to me <laughs> okay uh, I think it's a good thing for the conductor to feel more human more personable I mean they can share little stories here and there like uh, if it helps with the music. But I also think it's better if we can just get... Okay, I think it depends. Uh, like if the piece is really difficult, uh, the conductor may read the room saying like, oh, maybe the mood is a bit down. Maybe I'll just cheer everyone, uh, cheer everyone up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the coffee is getting to me. So cheer everyone up uh, with a light story, joke, just leave everyone's mood and then get on with the uh, real soul. So I think um, it's good to not just rehearse dryly, but also put in something that, uh, that, that makes you more personable. Yeah, so telling stories and and talking, it's, it's for purpose, like what you say, to uh, make the orchestra more relaxed and mm. make him more... Uh, personal approachable so that yeah. people know know more about him but um i heard of um, some conductors mm. okay the uh, true story this one uh, <laughs> there was we, this we might cut <laughs> there, there was this um there was this school which um was participating in syf and the syf is like next week so they're down to the last final few. rehearsal final I know, two yeah maybe final two or three i cannot remember okay and they were really playing like crap you know <laughs> and they were all very stressed and they wanted to more practice to quickly practice more to to get better you know to be stage ready yeah but the conductor came in and start to talk and nag about things talk about himself for like 45 minutes to one hour how can and, okay and everyone's like just sitting there, sitting there, and hoping that you quickly get on with it, you know. So in that situation, would you think you raise your hand and say like, "Can we just re rehearse?" I would mean, you just stop him. <laughs> they they are teenagers. They oh, cannot do that if they because do because they would not thought that way. <laughs> not that they would not thought that way. I mean, it is. I think maybe the teachers in charge oh. would uh yeah should need interject. To, and say, oh, we are running short of time. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes maybe the teacher in church wouldn't know that he will he will carry on for so long. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, everyone plays a part. If perhaps there should be a checks and balances. Okay, this is getting a little uh, <laughs> authoritative, but like if that there needs to be a good balance of everything, uh, basically. Um. No, I think it's very quite. It's it's quite clear cut la. do not be naggy and, ah, and okay. talk so yes, much fair about enough. Fair enough. yourself or about don't know I mean nagging students about their, their I mean okay I, I really think it would be good <laughs> if we can know the context of the nagging so 
Are uh, you gonna share it? Uh, I, okay, no, I'm not. I'm not sure. They're just gonna the, some. <laughs> just, just the usual nagging, lah. You know, like uh, what's good? Sian yu la, what's more la da jiang la, yu xian zhuo zhuo zhuo. Oh, those kind of nagging. Yeah, this kind of nagging. Not very constructive. Yeah, not very constructive nagging. I mean, maybe the person thinks that it is constructive giving feedback, but not in a way that puts people down. Maybe or like doesn't get to the point. Not in a way that puts people down. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm not there. Mm. <laughs> like makes them feel like huh, I'm, a, I'm a bad player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's quite clear cut that um, nagging is no good, nah. Especially nagging for long periods, nah. Sometimes mm. it's just the conductor's um, uh, personality. Uh-huh. Yeah, the the person needs to be more self aware. We have one last submission, and just a quick look at it. It looks a bit uh, technical. So bear with me, but I also think uh, this person has a point to drive home. So the person says, uh, "There's a huge variety of conducting styles. Western trained conductors usually like to conduct ahead of time, uh, i.e., that's it. Uh, their upbeat actually is their downbeat, and they usually give the mood, parentheses mood or treatment of note." Or phrase well in advance, uh, whereas typical Chinese orchestra conductors only give such cues much closer to the phrase itself, sometimes on the very last upbeat before it. So most conductors, this person seen, uh, have very standard conducting stroke, which can be a bit dull. But those without the standard conducting strokes fall uh, in opposite ends, two opposite ends. Either one is very musically driven, while the other can get sometimes a little messy. Yeah. Mm. So I think what the person is saying is that um, different conductors, even though they don't have the very usual like one, two, three, four stroke, they give more, they imbue more mood, mood driven, musically driven. But sometimes it gets a bit messy. Because uh, some musicians might not understand the stroking, some musicians might think that um, it's giving the wrong signal. So, uh, as the musicians, they might feel a bit uh, unenjoyable, or it might feel very messy to be in this orchestra. Yeah, I think that's what the person is trying to say. Okay, that yeah. means the conductor is too advanced for <laughs> the orchestra. Advanced might be a subjective word, also. Yeah, but again, because uh, this is just uh, based on the person's experience. There's there's not much context on uh, the level, like at what level the conductor is at, or whether it's a student, a uh, student orchestra where the musicians musicians are students or adults like us, it's like semi professionals. So yeah, but I think in general, it 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 is a little daunting. To play in an orchestra where they don't understand what the conductor is doing, also, so things just get messy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> have you been in? I mean, of course, you don't have much experience, uh, mm. as much as uh, we do in terms of like playing in orchestras. But have you heard any stories? Actually, to be honest, I'm always not very aware of what, <laughs> what the conductor <laughs> is doing <laughs> when during the time when I was in. In uh, an orchestra, mm. you know, some somehow the music the the music just goes, and I just um you just follow. I just follow la. I and a lot of people say that uh, you should look at the conductor. My yeah, mom, yeah. those people who do not really look oh, at no, the conductor. Oh no, you're the conductor's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I I have a good ear, so I do listen to the music and I yeah. I do follow follow the music la. But yes, I do understand um what the the person probably trying to say that um some. Yeah, some orchestras that are really, um, the conductor is um, not really very proficient, mm. so it makes things uh, really messy, and um, I mean, to to that I would like to say that um, okay, sometimes uh, okay, it depends on the setting. Of course, if you are in a professional um, orchestra or if you are in a school orchestra that is. Gunning for uh, SYF distinction, um, then uh, it is very important to have a good um, conductor who can bring things to the next level. But if you are joining an amateur orchestra, you know the person, the conductor might be there as a volunteer or might be just taking a, a nominal amount of fee to be there mm-hmm. because. The fee will not be able to engage someone really good, mm-hmm. so the person is uh, just there, 
you know, to take you off. He's just there. That's kind of sad. <laughs> no, I haven't finished my my, my <laughs> sentence. Just there to take you through the 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 uh, orchestra practice mm. to let you all have a good time playing pieces, you know. So yeah, I mean, give give the instructor some some slack. And uh, as long as it does not uh, abuse you physically or verbally, make and, you uncomfortable. Yeah, make you uncomfortable. Yeah. You go there and uh, enjoy the music, enjoy uh, the, your friends, the company, the yeah, community. The, yeah, enjoy yeah. playing in an orchestra. I think I think that that's fine now, You know, so if you are a player looking for an orchestra to join, um, do let us know because we do know of quite a few orchestras for leisure players mm-hmm. and also for people who have a certain skill level because um, they play pieces that really require you to practice yeah, and like you need yeah. to be able to play <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 so, like your orchestra right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay so that's all the time we have left for this episode thank you so much for listening up to this point and we hope to see you again in our next episode Bye-bye. bye bye bye